Get ready to see some of the most interesting work from some of the most talented young filmmakers around town. You're watching Zoom In. You're watching Zoom In. Zoom In. Zoom In. Now what we're about to show you is going to zoom in to our thoughts, feelings, and opinions about violence. This is a story about violence in our world and the way it affects us. Drugs, gangs, and mindless murder are plaguing the streets of today's society. Violence hurts more people than you know. In 1990, uh, my only son and child, Kofi Lester, was murdered in San Francisco. Since that time, my life was completely changed because now there's a void in my life. I figured if he did die, it would be an automobile accident once he started driving. But never in my wildest dreams did I think it would ever be gunshot. But it did. I just can't believe you killed me, man. Can't believe you did that. What did I ever do to you? Not one gang member is going to write you a letter if you are arrested. Not a one. You know who's going to come to see you? It most likely is going to be your family. It's going to be your biological family. Well, what we've seen overall in the past 10 years is that youth violence is actually down. But on the other hand, we've seen in particularly uh, communities like Bayview Hunters Point, Visitation Valley, Western Edition, an increase in violent crime. And so while overall in the nation and in the state, violent crime is down, in these communities it's up. We used to have D.A.R.E. in my elementary school, and the police used to come, and all the kids would just run up to the police and be like, can you show us your gun? Could you show us your gun? Could you shoot something? They just care about his gun. They always take out their gun and show us. Little boys like, oh, and all mesmerized by it. They see the good people have guns too and the bad. So they feel like, oh, the good person has a gun. The bad person has a gun. I can have a gun. Where did you go, big bro? Where are the big brothers who said he's not go? The ones holding our hands, crossing the street, walking the block. The ones who care, the ones who share, the ones who are there, to see the steps, to see the fight, to see the light. Shelter the children, cold in the night. Where did you go, big bro? We need you here, the something shade, to take back our names from grasp, from hate. I got friends that's, feel me, 10, 11 years old that's carrying guns. You gotta explain to your child that it's, it's not it's not a toy, you don't just play with it. If you can sell guns to a 10 year old, you can sell guns to anybody. It's money, it's all about money to me. If they, gon', if they can sell it for a price, they, they gonna get their money. You can't stop nobody from getting paid. He's a profiteer, he's making money, got everybody acting like a dummy. I get 17 cents for every bullet. Come on, little man, find that trigger and pull it. Got you fighting over colors from blue to red. You'll be buying bandanas until you're dead. He's a profiteer, he's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. Crack, heroin, ecstasy. From the sale to the overdose, I'm stacking cheese. How many addicts are born each day? I couldn't have done it without the CIA. He's a profiteer, he's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. Got a three day notice and you're feeling frustration. Repeat after me. Gentrification, that toxic air and land you breathe will be a thing of the past once you leave. He's a profiteer, he's making money. Got everybody acting like a dummy. Give me all your kids and I'll put them to work. Send them overseas to die in the dirt. 
Mom and dad keep waving that flag, and I'll keep stuffing this money bag. He's a profiteer, he's making money, got everybody acting like a dummy. The price of dying is multiplying, that's why I'm celebrating while you're crying. The flowers, the preacher, and the hearse will spend more on a funeral than on your child's birth. He's a profiteer, he's making money, got everybody acting like a dummy. If you're exposed to violence on an everyday basis, you see it when you're walking down the streets, you hear it at night when you're sleeping, you hear gunshots outside, it creates an environment where you're almost numb to violence. And also when violence is done onto to you, there's always the tendency to do violence back. You see violence everywhere, wherever you go, you're gonna have violence. Do you think there's many non-violent topics as there is violent topics covered in the media? Well, let's see. If you're talking about television news, I haven't counted, but I suspect there are probably more violent issues that are covered than nonviolent. However, um, it depends what you think is violent. I mean, you know, in politics, there are certain things that are covered. We have a war going on, um, and so that's going to be covered quite a bit. In movies, you get to, like, like, just watch it go on, you feel me, and just see it. But in video games, you can actually do it. A product manager does a variety of different things at Electronic Arts. I'm responsible for all the marketing of the game I'm working on, whichever one that may be. So at the moment I'm working on Battlefield 2. I work on everything uh, that is viewed outside the company. For example, the box that the game sits in on the shelf or the advertising that's uh, in magazines or on TV. EA is a good place to work. Um, it's obviously it's the, the biggest company in the industry by, by quite a long way. So it's good fun to be there and, and have all that power. Why, why do you think so many of you like violent like video games? That's a good question. It's, um, it's, I think it's a reflection of just interest that people have in society in general. I mean, I, I think uh, guys in particular and, and people in general tend to always enjoy kind of competition. Even when, when you're kids, you enjoy like play fighting with each other and then you start playing like cops and robbers or cowboys and Indians or whatever. It's always like people enjoy taking sides. That means war quite a lot of the time. They like being able to identify with one group of people that are the goodies and then not like another group of people that are the baddies. And I think in video games, it's, it's just, uh, it works well to try and convert that kind of goodies and baddies into video games so you can you can run around and shoot at people and inevitably that means violence in quite a lot of cases. But again, it's fake um, and um, it, I cover when it's real. And so it's, it's actually hard for me to watch. I stopped watching scary movies a long time ago, a long time ago. Um, and, and the video games to me, are they, they seem a bit over the top. It's always fun to beat up on somebody in a video game. You can't kill a person and they like push restart, push the green button and they automatically start over or something. You can't save your progress. Be like, hold on, you died. Wait, let me go back. Basically, you run around and shoot at guys. That's all you have to do in the game. And it's just, they're just playing fun to play. They're simple, they're pretty easy to understand. Um, it's pretty clear what it is you're trying to do. They're addictive. Children are impressionable, so what they see, they tend to do. Well, I don't really play video games, but my brother does. He um, he was playing Grand Theft Auto yesterday. It's already influencing him. I mean, I try to tell him that he shouldn't play that game, but he's like, oh, it's just a game. It's not really influencing me, but I know it is. I can just see it in his demeanor and the way he like looks at things differently now. I'm like, why do you even bother to play that game? He just forgot who he is in a way. Kind of. We're talking about money, and when it comes to money, unfortunately, uh, the corporate world doesn't seem to care, doesn't seem to care about the impact it has on our children. It'll be like around the house, like, and stuff like that, and um, <laughs> acting like he's the person on the game. SRB was actually set up by the video game industry. It's an attempt for them to self-regulate themselves to, to really to, to help the public understand which games are appropriate for which people. We originally had a two or three different levels and they've recently expanded it a bit with the E10 plus rating. So now there's the E for everyone and E10 plus and the T for teen, the M for mature and uh, 18s and above only the real serious adult games. 
and those, the ESRB have done a lot of work to make sure those, those ratings are clearly marked on the games and, and the advertising so people know before launch what kind of game it's going to be. If a game is rated uh, 18 or M for Mature, uh, EA and most of the other video games companies won't advertise it in magazines that kids buy and they won't advertise it on TV channels that kids watch or at times of the day that kids watch it. They'll only put it in adult magazines and late at night and so on. The one area where the SRB hasn't worked perfectly is at retail where there hasn't been great enforcement so far. Like you guys could probably walk into a store and pick up a, an M-rated game and buy it. The same way that you guys would get carded if you go to a movie, you should get carded if you try and pick up an M-rated game. So the average age of gamers is going up. Uh, it's around 28 now, I believe. And most of our audience is between 18 and 34. Those guys are all adults, so there shouldn't be any reason why we shouldn't make adult games for that audience. If I had kids, I would certainly want to know what kind of games they were playing, how they were playing it. Violent video games, I think it gives you a chance to escape from reality. Because I know I like them, that's why. I mean, I'm not going to shoot somebody in real life or blow up their car. I think it's just a chance for you just to do something bad without the consequences. I don't have concerns about the games we're making at EA. I don't know that, you know, violence uh, in films or violence in video games necessarily creates violence or directly causes violence, but it certainly puts those kinds of ideas and images in one's head. Movies have other genres like drama or comedy or whatever, and I think it, it would be great to make video games of those, but it's just harder to translate that into a game that you guys would want to play, you know. I might like to make a game about <clears throat> lacrosse or something, but there's only so many people play lacrosse, so we've got to figure out, is that, is that worth the worth the time it takes to make that game. Do you ever work on military simulation games built for the military, not really for public retail? At EA, as far as I know, we have not worked on any games specifically for the military. Uh, there are games like that that other companies have worked on, uh, like America's Army, which is specifically for the Army, and to some extent it's a recruiting tool for them, because if you play the game, it It'll, it'll prompt you to kind of check out the army and so on if you liked it. Um, and there's other games that I know have been developed for the military as simulations so that they can actually train the soldiers. If there's a lot of war going on and people are watching it all the time, then there's probably going to be a few more video games like that. But what we don't do is directly make video games based on current events. We don't want to offend people or hurt people that are, that are involved in those things. It's not just in games, it's in books, it's in TV. You see it in the news all the time. Every time you turn on the TV, you see violence. One of the reasons why we do cover crime is that it is a problem in the community, um, and we're supposed to be watching over the community in some way, um, and so we cover it. There's already wars between people out here. My brother, he went to the military when he was 18, and I was, I think I was like 10. So when he left, I was really sad. He was a nice brother and everything. And when he came back, his whole personality changed. The way he carried himself, the way he talked, it was just like I didn't know him. I was just like, man, you're so different. He was really strict and he was just like, like his, the demeanor of his face changed too. I was like, man. I had a brother that went to Iraq. From his experience, he said it was just it was unbelievable, some of the stuff they saw over there. It really changed his mind about er everything, basically. He's really more strict. He didn't act like that before he left. It really does traumatize, because he really wakes up. He wakes up with cold sweats and, and all sorts of stuff. And like the things they saw, you think it's over, but you never really can tell what's going on in a human being's mind. You're going to see somebody that looks like somebody that you shot. 
and you're gonna think that they're against you. He said it's babies really just walking around with bombs on them. And that's, that's all that stuff is really, like, really happening. Innocent civilians getting hurt, and it's, it's not even worth it. The U.S. really does need to have this oil in order to keep the economy running, but at the same time, this country needs, the, needs to have food and other support. Bush is sitting in that office with his legs crossed or legs up on the desk, eating a hot sandwich and not caring. Go shoot up somebody because, oh, the president say, oh, you gotta go cap him. What they call it, patriotism. And it's a war I didn't even start. You feel me? Right now, in the mail, I have at least seven letters from the Army telling me to join. I have two from the Navy, three from the Army, and I have like four from the Air Force. I was by my school one time, and then a Navy recruiter came up in, to me and just was like, you should be in the Navy, it's really nice, and all that. We will take people like you. You should go to college, just join the Navy and all that. And he gave me a card and I didn't even think about it because a lot of people risking their lives and they got sons and daughters that they really care about and people just take them away from the sons and daughters. Yeah, I'm going to college, getting my education and having a nice career, not joining the Navy because someday I'll have a son and daughter that I will love and I will risk my life going to another country and just dying. If you was the president and you had two kids, two, three kids, and and you and you were sending people from your state to war and you knew they was dying, would you send your kids? They don't want kids to play with guns and everything, but they're recruiting 18-year-old boys to go to war and have a gun and to shoot people. If you don't want violence, we shouldn't have violence. We should just bring our soldiers home if they don't want violence. We shouldn't have um, military people going around showing them how to use guns or encouraging them to come and join the military. That's violence too. If you want peace, you're gonna have to make, you're gonna have to take a big step and do peace everywhere. Where did you go, big bro? It's been a long time, yo. We miss you. Come back so I can help these kids grow. Get away from the war, the battle here on the street. Give us what we've been missing, your love. Learn how to handle your anger. Um, when you get angry, learn how to talk about it. Doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to bother young folks. Nah, if you hurt someone, and, and that really troubles me because I'm trying to figure out a way how to change that. It just comes to a point as to like how you were raised and who you're around and how they can help you to better yourself and better your community. It's okay to be angry. It's what you do with it. All I wanted to know is why did Bush start the war? That's all I wanted to know. You know, you break the pattern uh, with a young person uh, while they're still forming uh, the ways in which they cope with the world and the strategies that they use to resolve conflict. That's the key uh, to stopping violence. Pray tell we wouldn't have all the wars and fighting like we do if we would just reach out and remember we all are human beings. When I first came here, we were covering a lot of crime in Bayview, a lot. Uh, there was a lot going on. Um, and when I first came into the community, I met a couple of different people um, who do uh, have community workshops and, and different things to help people. And I think it's going to change. I think it's going, I think the community members um, have really put a lot of work and time and, you know, sweat and tears into trying to make it so that the, the area isn't so crime ridden. But it's going to take young folks like you to make a difference.